In a previous video, we derived the formula for the sum of a finite geometric series, where a is the first term and r is our common ratio. What I want to do in this video is now think about the sum of an infinite geometric series. And I've always find this, found this mildly, mildly mind-blowing, because, or actually more than mildly mind-blowing, because you're taking the sum of an infinite things, but as we see, you can actually get a finite value depending on what your common ratio is. So uh, there's a couple of ways to think about it. One is you could say that this, the sum of an infinite geometric series is just the limit of this as n approaches infinity. So we could say, we could say what is the limit? What is the limit as n approaches infinity, as n approaches infinity of this business, of the sum from k equals zero, from k equals zero to n of a times r to the k, which would be the same thing as taking the limit as n approaches infinity right over here. So that would be the same thing as the limit as n approaches infinity of all of this business. Let me just copy and paste that so I don't have to keep switching colors. So copy and then paste. So what's the limit as n approaches infinity here? Let's think about that for a second. I encourage you to pause the video and I'll give you one hint. Think about it for r's greater than one, for r's equal to one, and actually let me make it clear. Let think about it for the absolute values of r's greater than one, the absolute values of r equal to one, and then the absolute value of r less than one. Well, I'm assuming you've given a go at it. So if r, if the absolute value of r is greater than one, as this exponent explodes, as it, as it approaches infinity, this number is just going to become massively, massively huge. And so the whole thing is just going to become, or at least you could think of it, the absolute value of the whole thing is just going to become a very, very, very large number. If r was equal to one, then the denominator is going to become zero, and we're going to be dividing by that denominator, and this formula just breaks down. But where this formula can be helpful, and where we can get this to actually give us a sensical result is when the absolute value of r is between zero and one. We've already talked about, we're not even dealing with the geometric, we're not even talking about a geometric series if r is equal to zero. So let's think about the case, let's think about the case where the absolute value of r is greater than zero and it is less than one. What's going to happen in that case? Well, the denominator is going to make sense right over here. And then up here, What's going to happen? Well, if you, take, if you take something with an absolute value less than one, and you take it to higher and higher and higher exponents, every time you multiply it by itself, you're going to get a number with a smaller absolute value. So this term right over here, this entire term, is going to go to zero as n approaches infinity. Imagine if r was 1 half. You're talking about 1 half to the hundredth power, 1 half to the thousandth power, 1 half to the millionth power, 1 half to the billionth power, that quickly approaches zero. So this goes to zero if the absolute value of r is less than one. So this, we could argue, would be equal to, would be equal to a over one minus r. A over one minus r. So for example, if I had the geometric series, if I had the, the infinite geometric series, let's just have a simple one. Let's say that my first term is one, and then each successive term, I'm going to multiply by one third. So it's one plus one third plus one third squared plus one third to the third plus, and I were to just keep on going forever, this is telling us that that sum, this infinite sum, I have an infinite number of terms here, this is, this is a pretty fascinating concept here, will come out to this. It's going to be my first term, it's going to be my first term, one over one minus my common ratio. One minus, my common ratio in this case is one third. One minus one third, which is the same thing as one over two thirds, which is equal to three halves, or you could view it as one and a half. That's a mildly amazing thing.